The show follows a group of teenage ghost hunters as they uncover a sinister plot in the world of the supernatural. The series has received generally positive reviews, with critics praising the show's engaging plot and well-developed characters. It is a good watch for people who likes horror, mystery and fantasy genre with a touch of humor. Here we take a look at the events of the final episode and address the mysteries that have been left unresolved. Spoilers ahead. The problem drastically altered the globe 50 years ago. Ghosts have taken over the world, and at night they grow stronger. The majority of the populace has been wiped out by their simple touch. Some children exhibit a propensity for particular abilities that qualify them to defend against this new horror. The one of them is Lucy. She is a listener who is learning how to hunt. However, a hunting incident goes horribly wrong, killing almost all of her teammates and leaving her best friend spirit bound and in a coma. A distraught Lucy runs away from her manipulative mother and arrives in London to complete her training and find a job as a hunter. After getting rejected by the prestigious agencies, she finds a place at Lockwood & Company, run by Anthony Lockwood. George is the only other employee at the moment, and Lucy joins them too, with no other option in sight. As they solve cases, Lucy discovers new things about her colleagues, while also finding out some very shocking things about her own powers. What's inside Lockwood's secret room? Lockwood shows Lucy around the house he discloses he inherited from his parents after she is hired by him. Lockwood shows Lucy every room in the home but one, from the kitchen to the library to the basement where all the weapons and artifacts are housed. This first floor room is always kept shut and is located there. It's forbidden for George and Lucy to go inside or even to talk about it. At one point, Lockwood says he doesn't want to talk about it because it is a part of his family's past. Due to his intense secrecy, Lucy and George are always interested in finding out more about the room. Somehow, it feels like the key to really understanding Lockwood and who he really is. While he knows everything about them, they barely know anything about him. And they feel that the answer to this enigma is behind that locked door. It is this curiosity that the skull in the jar later feeds on. To make her trust him, he gives her cryptic messages. To get her interested, he talks about Lockwood and the dark secret that he has been keeping inside his room. However, he doesn't reveal exactly what it is. It soon becomes apparent that Lockwood did not have a particularly happy childhood. He lost both of his parents when he was six years old, and neither Lucy nor George are aware of the circumstances surrounding their passing. It must be something horrific from Lockwood's past, something bad, something he blames himself for, and something he doesn't want to face because he doesn't want people to know, according to the minor details that have been disclosed over the season. The event with Lucy and her former colleagues is similar in that Lucy doesn't want anyone to know about it, since she feels bad for disappointing her pals, and it would reflect poorly on her resume. While the program, like Lockwood, keeps the details under wraps, readers of the books can infer what the secret room's significance is. In the books, Lockwood bears the blame for his sister Jessica's death because she was the owner of the room and was slain by a ghost in the past. For Lockwood's character, this is a crucial piece of the puzzle because it explains a lot of things about him. It will be interesting to observe if the program stays on the same path. The show has changed several aspects of the tale, yet it still mostly adheres to the books on which it is based. It is possible that something else entirely might come out as the real secret inside that room. Who's the man with the golden blade? The man with the golden sword is a unique character developed for the Netflix series, which is another example of how the show departs from the books in certain ways. He appears to be modeled after a character from the books, but has his own unique storyline, which is what makes him so intriguing. When Lucy and Lockwood break into the Fitz library to get Mary Dulac's book, he makes his first appearance. This happens after a conflict during which it is revealed that the strange man is a skilled hunter. Over the next few encounters, it becomes clear that the man works directly for Penelope Fitz and doesn't follow the same agenda as other ghost hunting agencies. He'd been sent to retrieve the bone glass, but Lockwood foils his quest both times, which develops a rivalry that will surely become a central plot point in the coming seasons. There is also a reason to believe that this man knows Lockwood more intimately than the latter expects. 
He called Lockwood by his first name, Anthony, which is a rarity because everyone else refers to him by his surname. The man also refers to his parents in the final episode, calling them and their deaths inconsequential in the grander scale of the plan. This means that this man knows something about Lockwood's family and might even have been involved in the murder of his parents. He says that Lockwood has no idea who he is twice, which means that there is a strong connection between Lockwood and this man. At this point, the man with the golden blade appears as nothing more than Penelope Fitz henchman, but we believe that there is much more to his story and his connection with Lockwood will become a decisive revelation in the future. What happens to the skull in the jar? The skull is relieved to have at last met a conversation partner. It takes advantage of the situation to try to trick Lucy into releasing it, but she is wiser than that. He was Edmund Bickerstaff's disciple, which makes him extremely useful in the hunt for the bone glass. However, he can't be fully trusted because he hides certain crucial information from Lucy. But in the end, he does support Lockwood and company, which is what worries Lucy and the audience about his uncertain future. In the final episode, Joplin holds George captive and forces him to look at the bone glass and tell her what he sees. Knowing that this will kill George, Lucy offers to take his place, but when the time comes to look in the mirror, she places the skull in its path instead. It is he who takes the brunt of the dark effects that the mirror has on a person who looks into it, and Lucy is saved. The skull screams about the mirror being a trap. Later, when the mirror is broken, the souls of the seven people whose bones were used to make it are released. Everyone comes back home safe and sound, except the skull. We learn that the skull hasn't spoken since it gazed in the mirror before the season is done. Does this imply that it is permanently lost? No, we don't think so. The skull still has a long way to go in its character arc because in the books it plays a significant role in Lucy's journey. The fate of the skull is uncertain, though, because the program can follow a different course from the books. It is obvious that he isn't technically dead, as it was already dead when it gazed in the mirror. Looking into the mirror does have adverse effects on whoever sees it, and it is possible that the skull is suffering from the same, and that's the reason for his silence. Another explanation is that the ghost has crossed over from the mirror, which was a window, into another world. We still don't know what the rules of this other world are, but we expect the ghost to come back in the next season and go back to its source, bringing the skull back to life.